in the annals of Earth's military history. Few tales are as perplexing and extraordinary as that of Alex Serbos, a pilot whose fate was thought sealed in the unforgiving depths of space. For many, his name became synonymous with sacrifice and heroism, his supposed demise a somber reminder of the perils faced by those who dared to venture beyond our planet's protective embrace. Alex Serbos was no ordinary pilot. His skill and courage were legendary, his unwavering dedication to the Earth forces earning him the admiration of comrades and superiors alike. But his story took a dramatic turn when, during a routine mission to an asteroid field, his spacecraft vanished leaving behind only whispers of sorrow and speculation. For two agonizing months, the world mourned the loss of one of its finest, grappling with the harsh reality of his absence. Yet, just when all hope seemed lost, a miraculous discovery shattered the veil of despair. Alex Serbos, the pilot believed lost to the void, was found alive, his survival defying all logic and reason. Questions swirled like cosmic dust, each inquiry probing the depths of disbelief. How could one endure for two long months in the cold confines of a space capsule? What unseen forces had conspired to spare his life amidst the vast expanse of the cosmos? and perhaps most baffling of all, what awaited him upon his return to Kepler. As news of his miraculous survival spread, Alex Serbos emerged not as a mere pilot but as a symbol of resilience and hope in the face of insurmountable odds. His journey from the depths of space to the embrace of humanity captivated the world, inspiring wonder, awe, and a renewed belief in the power of the human spirit. And as the mysteries surrounding his ordeal continued to unravel, one thing remained certain the tale of Alex Serbos was far from over. The Apollo Project Chapter 2, Part 6 Admiral Jake Tillis urgently summoned Fleet Admiral Serbos to Apollo 1, stressing the need for secrecy from Sandra and others. He revealed the existence of Alex's remains, a matter he deemed crucial for Serbos to handle. Tillis informed Serbos that he and Captain Heron would be waiting, with Lieutenant Jones ready to escort him. They then proceeded to discuss Alex Serbos's status with Captain Jackson. Jake asked Captain Jackson how Alex was doing. Jackson said Alex is in great shape and has a great attitude. We ran every test on him, from toe to hair, blood work, breathing blood pressure, and every test you can think of. This might shock you, but even a pregnancy test... Jake said, Doctor, you know he has been missing for two months. How can he lie in a capsule alive for two months? Jackson, being a humorist, said Alex held his breath. But seriously, Admiral, there is no way I can answer that. Jackson said, I am sure Admiral Sir Boss will ask the same question. We can continue to run tests on him. Dr. Jackson asked, Has anyone told him he has been missing for two months and was presumed dead? Charles said, No. I asked for no one to bring that matter up. Having received a call from Jake, Big Boss informed Sandra of the urgent meeting on Apollo 1. They shared a brief moment before Big Boss departed to meet with Jake. Doctor. Jackson left and paused, he then stopped. He looked back at Jake and Charles and said, Oh yeah, we did find one thing, however. Jake said, What's that? Jackson said he had grown an inch, six feet two to six feet three. That is odd. Jackson returns to his staff to continue running tests on Alex. Later, Big Boss landed on Apollo 1. Lieutenant Jones saluted Big Boss and started walking to meet Jake and Charles. As Lieutenant and Big Boss walked, she made a left turn, and Big Boss made a right turn, heading toward the morgue. The lieutenant stopped and said, Sir, Admiral Sir Boss. Big Boss continued walking toward the morgue, and she repeated, Admiral Sir Boss, this way, sir. He stopped, she said, this way, sir. Big Boss turns around and walks to her. He knew the Apollo was renovating, maybe they moved the morgue. Jake and Charles were standing in the corridor talking. Big Boss walked through the door, walked in, and thanked Lieutenant Jones for escorting him. Big Boss spoke, and both men saluted him. Big Boss said, so what have you found? Jake nor Charles said a word. They walked down the hall, back to the room with the huge glass window, and looked in the room again. 
Big Boss walked behind them and said, Were there any remains? Jake pointed to the window. Big Boss looked shaken and fell against the big glass window when he saw Alex waving at him. Big Boss slowly dropped to his knees and said, What is this? Alex saw Big Boss fall. Alex pulled all the wires off his chest and arms and ran to the window, looking down at Big Boss. Alex yelled, Dad, Dad, are you okay? Jake and Charles pulled Big Boss up from the floor. Big Boss leaned against the window at Alex. Big Boss was in shock and crying. Alex said, I am okay, Dad. Still leaning against the window, Big Boss gave Alex a thumbs up, and Alex repeated the thumbs up back. As Big Boss walked off, he asked how. Charles and Jake said they had no idea. Big Boss shook his head. Alex asked where Mom, Sharon, and Regina were. Big Boss said, I love you. Alex said, I love you too. Big Boss asked when I could see him. Jake said we would see him in the morning. The doctors and nurses ran every possible exam they had for him. The nurses came up and put Alex back to bed. Alex waved at his dad. Big Boss waved back. Jake said, Let's get a cup of coffee. After making it to the dining room, the three men sat. Jake said, Bishop, I know this is a shock. It's been a shock to all of us. We have no answers. Charles ordered coffee for everyone. Jake said to Big Boss, give yourself a moment. We are all still in shock. Jake said, how do you want to handle this? After Big Boss calmed himself, he said, let us give this a couple of days to sort out. Jake said to call Sandra and that he would call Laura. We will tell them we were staying over on the Apollo tonight. We can talk to Alex first thing in the morning. Big Boss said, yeah, let's do that. I'll meet you here around 7 a.m. In my office said Jake, Big Boss said, okay. The three officers had their coffee and called it a night. Big Boss tosses and turns all night and sleeps very little. He got up at 5 a.m. Bishop called Sandra. He asked her how she was feeling. She said she had a dream about Alex and couldn't sleep. She stated how much she missed him. Bishop said he did as well. He asked how was Sharon. Sandra said she was okay. Sharon is trying to smile more, but she still misses her brother. Sandra also said Regina is still broken. She looks strong, but I can feel her sadness. Bishop said I love you and we'll see you later when I get home this evening. They both kissed over the comms. Big Boss later met with Jake in his office. Jake said, Good morning, Bishop. Come right in. Jake asked his assistant if he could bring them coffee. Both sit at the table with their coffee. Big Boss, do you have any idea how we approach this? Well, let's hug him and rejoice with him. Let him talk. We must ask him questions from there, said Jake. Big Boss, Charlie, and Jake arrived in Alex's room. Alex greeted the three men with a salute and hugged Bishop and Jake for at least two minutes before they released their grip on each other. The four of them sat at the table in Alex's room and exchanged good morning greetings. Captain Heron spoke first and asked Alex how he felt after the recent scare. Alex replied that he was feeling great, except for a slight headache, which the nurse said might have been caused by the impact of the escape pod. Apart from that, he was doing fine. Alex asked if everyone was worried about him. Please tell them I am fine and will be back soon. Alex asked about his mom, Sharon, and Regina, and he said he would call them later. Jake said I won't advise that yet. Charles asks if he recalls the incident. When Alex inquired about what had hit him, he wondered if they were under attack. He could only remember a beam and had ejected upon seeing a bright flash, causing him to black out. Charles asked how long you were out. Alex said, I had no idea until you showed up. Alex said to Charles, you got there in a flash. Alex said, I might have been out long before you arrived. He told Charles the first was pleased to see you and said I was happy to be alive. Thank God, Alex said. Both Bishop and Jake were listening and were still shocked to hear Alex's story. Charles said, Alex, would you mind talking with another doctor later today? 
This is just another part of the exam. Alex said, sure. Charles asked Alex, you only recalled being blacked out from the ejection until you saw me? Alex said, yes. Charles looked at Bishop and Jake. They looked back at Charles. Charles looked back at Alex. He told Alex, I'd like for you to take a look at the videos from Lieutenant Commander Gills and Smith. Alex said, Lieutenant Commanders, those two shouldn't be cadets over toy soldiers, and he laughed out loud. Charles said, I'd like you to look at the videos from both Gills and Smith. Alex saw the videos, and he looked at them over and over. Alex never saw his escape pod ejected. Alex looked around the room and asked, how? Alex dropped his head and asked, what will we do? I don't understand. Charles said, once we finish that last exam in a few hours, it will be up to your dad and Admiral Tillis. Alex looked around the room and asked, how again? Big Boss looked at Alex and said, son, you've been gone for two months. We had your memorial. Jake said we had your celebration and honored and promoted you to lieutenant commander. Alex looked confused and cried, no way. Mom, Sharon, and Regina think I am dead. Alex dropped his head and asked, what will we do? Charles said, once we finish the last exam in a few hours, we will hold you until your dad and Admiral Tillis give us clearance for your release. For now, this is classified. Alex said he understood. Charles said he would check back in once the last exam was complete. Captain Heron stood up, saluted, and left the room. Big Boss said, Jake and I had moments when we had to tell parents about the loss of their child. We never once had to tell a parent your child was found alive that much. Big Boss asked Alex, so what are we going to do? We need to think. This is going to be a big blow to many people. Big Boss said, I can see it now you walking around and people saying, hey, aren't you dead? Alex replied, yeah, me too, with a grin. Jake said, we only have two options. One, come forward and get it all out there. Somehow Alex was missing and our sensors couldn't detect him. Lieutenant Commander Serbos has some memory issues we cannot explain as we are still investigating the strange Victor field. We are closely monitoring the asteroid field and have prohibited other pilots from entering it. We will continue to send probes and satellites into the area. We will monitor the region around the far planet and the Victor asteroid field for many years. Option two involves changing his identity and relocating him to a small town in Montana on Earth. Big Boss said I like the first option. Are we ready to deal with the media? Jake said, yes, we only know what we know. We trust Alex's word and believe in what he said. Big Boss said, yes, we do with my life. Big Boss, Jake and Alex continue to think. Alex seems relieved and shares. I'm glad to be back and caught up on everything. I just saw everyone a day ago in my mind, so I'm sure they missed me. I deeply apologize for the pain you all went through, thinking you had lost me. Jake is overcome with emotion and tears, while Big Boss adds no one could eat or sleep. We all tried our best to move on, but I don't think we truly did. Your mother and sister are a mess, and poor Regina feels her world is over. Alex said I am sorry. It is lovely to know so many people cared about me and gave me a wonderful celebration. At that point, a nurse came in to take Alex to his last exam. Alex left the room. Big boss, due to all this, how do you feel about us releasing him for flying for a while? Jake said he agreed and that Alex would understand. Big boss, Alex always wanted to fly, Jake said. I know, and he will again. Big boss, so where do we put him? Jake responded that he would like to have him under my command staff. Big boss, said I like that. Thank you. Jake said he would talk to Alex about the changes. Big Boss said, So how will we break this to the ladies and family? Jake said not the way we learned about it, hopefully less shockingly. Big Boss said I think we should call them up. Send a military air taxi down for me. 
Sandra should be home Sharon's classes aren't till later today. So they both are home. Regina is in the office. I will have a press conference tomorrow morning. Captain Heron met with Big Boss and Jake again, informing them that Jake passed the last exam, which was a truth exam. It was 100% on that test as well. Big Boss told Charles that he and Jake decided to inform the family today and the media tomorrow. Charles said he agreed with the decision. Big Boss said I would like for you to be there. Jake returned to the room. He patted Alex on the shoulder, saying he had some calls to make and would see him later. Charles smiled at Alex and left the room as well. Big Boss told Alex how emotionally stressed and relieved all this had been to him. But his heart is at ease and pleased to have his son again. He said many people don't get this kind of opportunity. Jake and I thought it best to end all the confusion for you, your mom, the family, and your friend, Regina. It's time to get back to normal. Your mother, Sharon, Regina, Jake's family, Sam, and Marshall will be here later this afternoon. I am sure they will want to know why. They think we are all coming together for something for you. I understand there will be some emotion, but I don't remember everyone's reaction. Regina has been so damaged. You know your mother talks a lot. She hasn't been herself. I will speak to everyone. Alex said they didn't have to come to me. I will be near when they come looking for me. Hours later, everyone arrived at the Apollo and was escorted to a conference room. Big Boss Jake Captain Heron and his recovery team awaited in the room. Big Boss and Jake hugged their wives. Big Boss asked everyone to have a seat. Big Boss spoke of Alex. Big Boss said that it had been two months, and it was hard to explain why we hadn't found Alex's body until now. Everyone started crying and was happy they found and recovered Alex. Big Boss said he would let Captain speak about the recovery. Captain Heron addressed the audience and explained the challenge of finding the lieutenant's body after two months. He was the first one on the scene, and I saw him. Then, the emergency team brought him in, and the doctor conducted a thorough examination, running every possible test. Big Boss followed up with Captain Heron and expressed his intention to speak with the media the next day. He then asked if anyone would like to see Alex's remains. Sharon stood up and said, Daddy, I think we have all suffered enough over the months, and no more suffering is necessary. Let Alex rest in peace, Big Boss agreed with Sharon, and said Alex needed to be at peace. Big Boss said Jake called him about an emergency on the Apollo and mentioned something about Alex's remains. When I arrived, he was shocked to see Alex's body laughing and talking. Everyone was taken back and repeated Regina said Alex's body was talking. Big Boss confirmed that Alex was alive and well and the room went wild excitedly. Sam and Marshall said, we saw Alex blown up, so everyone was asking how he could be alive. Regina who had been in the room and ran out crying and saw someone standing in the middle of the hall. She couldn't tell who it was due to the distance and her tears, but as she got closer, she realized it was Alex. She ran towards him, screaming with joy and repeating his name. They kissed and cried together. As Alex and Regina were kissing, everyone rushed out of the conference room to see Alex alive. Sharon and her mom dashed the door to the corridor when they noticed Regina wasn't in the room. Sharon screamed and called Alex's name with joy and laughter. She hugged Regina and Alex, crying. Sandra made it next and joined the big hug. It was a moment of overwhelming joy. Later, Sam and Marshall participate in the big hug, following the Jake family. Big Boss and Jake join into the big crying, joyful hug. Captain Heron made it up to the big crying huddle and said, Okay, you can take him home. Everyone starts even much louder. Alex looked at Regina and asked her if she would marry him. Regina removed the necklace from around her neck where she kept Alex's engagement ring. She gave it to him, and Alex took a knee and asked Regina to be his wife. Regina said yes a million times, and it's yes. Everyone cheered and left for home. A week later, Alex and Regina got married. It was a very large wedding. 
Alex and Regina introduce Sam and Marshall to Regina's two sisters, well, that's another story in chapter someday, maybe. Three months later, during a family event with Regina and Alex's families, Regina broke the news to everyone that she was pregnant. Alex was shocked he had no idea. Alex held Regina so passionately and kissed her. Regina said there is more news. Twin, everyone cheered with excitement. Sandra said the Sir Boss clan continues to grow. Big boss, I said a toast. We are so happy with this family. We met at our very lowest times with courage, and we have now been blessed with so much more. We give thanks. Later that night before bed, Alex stood in the closet and saw his old air suit he had worn during the crash he reached into the pocket and saw these golden wings he said to himself. I've never seen these. Regina said, What? Alex, oh nothing. The wings had a large uh, in the middle with spread wings. Alex touched the wings and it glowed he heard a voice. It spoke the ancients are watching. The end of chapter two.